Hi, Heinz. Welcome back. Hey, thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me back. I'm quite surprised I was invited back after the last one, but uh, that's great. Always fun speaking to you. Yeah, uh, and I corrected, you know, some some facts on Twitter because someone su um, suggested you as a Java specialist, and I immediately uh, corrected the the fact that you are actually a professional snooker player, and occasionally, <laughs> and occasionally you write something about Java, but actually you have no idea about Java, and you 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 confirmed that, and uh, because you know there's lots of fake news on Twitter. Yeah, well, you know, it's Twitter, so it's it's, it's obviously true, right? Um, did, did, did I tell you last time about how much snooker I played at university? Or was that yeah, just yeah. like that? Yeah, okay, we covered okay, this okay. extensively, so this is yeah, why yeah, I know that it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm a hopeless snooker player. <laughs> really, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> then um, we have to do, you know, two-factor uh, authentication because lots of, you know, fake AI and fake videos yeah, yeah, on exactly. the internet. Exactly. So, so what I did is Deep I... Um, videos. I Deep fakes. This is the name. Uh, deep fake. Exactly. Um, so to check whether you're not a deep fake, um, I, I read your specialist letter number one. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, yes. and uh, but how, yeah, and you clarified the name of your company. Now the qu question number one: yes. How you wanted to rename your company? So you suggested two names. Oh, did I? Uh, yeah, that's a long time ago. <laughs> it's like 22 years ago. The first edition was like 22 years ago. So um, I, 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 I did have the, the thing of, well, um, uh, the whole thing you suggested, about... You suggested VB XML specialist. specialist and VB specialist. VB exactly. specialist, yeah, VB specialist. A yeah. And XML specialist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Wait, the X... So perhaps in future I would change my logo to the XML specialist, and I say, "Is it Heinz XML specialist?" So, and I will read, you know, the, <laughs> the, the 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 other specialist newsletter. I'm really curious whether you will start, you know, writing about ESB soap and all the <laughs> nice stuff, you know. <laughs> but um, what I have to say first, I think the first episode, or, or how to call it, the first edition of your newsletter. Yes. It's not about deadlocks, right? It's just about threading and swing. So I re read this actually three times. Oh, yeah. But it has nothing to do about uh, deadlocks. But it's, what's interesting, yes. it, um, in the year 2000, you yes. already used Invoke Later. Of course. And this is amazing. Yeah, of course. Of course. But of course. it's not that, of course. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure you... I use it later. I think at the, in 2000, <laughs> I just... I just put everything in action, action performed. You know, I was I was yeah, happy yeah, that yeah, yeah. everything is working. So I don't think in the year two thousand, I was using Invoke Later with the Swing Utilities and all the EQ. So I was curious, and I read the second episode or or edition of your of your uh, newsletter, and this yeah. was also amazing because what you described there is the initializer in anonymous inner class. So I have to say, for that time, it was two thousand. The content was. I mean, incredible. You know, in all the German press, we read about uh, how to call a getter and, and uh, said it could be dangerous, you know, and uh, always think about to string. And, and you wrote 20 years ago about uh, uh, initializers and anonymous image classes and what you can do with it. So I'm really pleasantly surprised. And I will read, you know, from the year 2000 until now all to try to read in you know, a one episode or one one newsletter a day because it's really interesting and uh, nice memories yeah thanks thanks so much uh, it's interesting the the uh, so swing was interesting um i don't think many people use swing still but obviously some do but what's interesting about swing is that it's it um it seduces you because mm -hmm. you start programming and let's say you're starting a new a new, uh, a new project in your company and you start programming, you sort of just do exactly what you do, what you did. You simply, you know, start all your threads and just just work in the GUI from all your threads without uh, without caring at all. Mm -hmm. And it sort of works. It works and it keeps working and it keeps working. And um, until your project is big enough that it becomes really hard to change and to fix. And mm -hmm. then the deadlocks start appearing. Mm-hmm. And we so you wrote this. This episode was specifically about deadlocks in Swing, right? This is what you wrote. This was about um, analyzing and discovering what the deadlocks are with Swing. It's yeah, Swing exactly. This is in focus in Swing because uh, yes, so okay, you started so because deadlocks. what usually happens to my projects is we're not deadlocks. It was inconsistencies, you know. 
table behaved strange. <laughs> yeah, that too. It, this was like not. I, I don't think we had deadlocks in Swing. Rather than you know, the the UI was inconsistent and somehow off. So this was my experience with too much threading yeah, in Swing, right? That, that might have been other race conditions that are appearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, very then, good. So now we know. Now we're still talking about Swing, uh, twenty two years ago. So which is uh, uh, <laughs> really exciting. Are you still using Swing? Uh, I haven't. No, I haven't written Swing for ages for a very long time. Yeah, the same here. It's, but but uh, at the time it was. And, and the thing is that at the time I, I had just come off two projects. One project was in South Africa, and one was in Germany, where where we had deadlocks in Swing applications. Mm -hmm. So can you I mention the project now? After twenty two years, or maybe think um, is NDA, I can't or... even remember what they were called. Oh, okay, that is the, <laughs> the perfect a... NDA, you know. <laughs> twenty two years ago, I mean, I'm sure I signed NDA in there valid for like five years, but it's like such a long time ago. The one was the, an year. You, you know what's cool? If, if we are consultants. If we sign the NDAs, we can say we cannot remember anything. So yeah, exactly. Doesn't matter anymore, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Forgot the name. But but the one was an ERP company which doesn't exist anymore. Um, oh. and uh, they were bought out and then they were bought out and they were bought out and they were bought out how they normally do this do this stuff and they had an application and, and it had what was it about uh, roughly what you know what they did, what they did? Um, well it was just an ERP system it's, it's like a, okay. it's an ERP system for for medium sized companies okay and and then what they did is they had this back uh, they had a, their own language Right, of course. Okay, this is already a bad sign. Okay, uh, okay, <laughs> <Well>, continue. <laughs> and then language. And so they had to try and find programmers who would program that proprietary language, right? Okay. <laughs> so that's I all assume is that there are not that much programmers. If you invent your own language, you cannot yeah, exactly, know, hope that someone exactly. knows it. It's different to what else, with, and it's filled with global variables and so on. So they, oh. you know, once you got in there, you could actually earn quite a lot of money as a consultant, I, I believe. Uh, I never had that, that uh, benefit. But then they wanted to um, preface that with Java. So they had like a front end as a swing front end. So basically they did something like um, the the swing front end was basically a, um, a mirror. It looked like the actual application so that you could access okay. it remotely. This was before everything moved onto the web. So then was, they basically had an applet um, mm -hmm. or an application which would then... Um, uh, Draw all the masks and then send all the events through to the uh, through to the back end. It actually worked, which was amazing. But the the programmer had done all the like he the, he hadn't paid too much attention to um, to to using Swing Invoke later. And uh, the problem with that is that if you um, if you don't, you get it just doesn't refresh anymore. Yeah. Wait a sec. What imp important for the listeners is it is actually an issue for. Every UI toolkit I know. Yes. Right? So the, the, That's nothing, right. Uh, whatever. I actually did a research one time. I think uh -huh. all UI toolkits available on Earth are single threaded. Yes. yes and if right. you know, yeah. And if you know, you know the swing problems, yes. you can actually apply your knowledge to whatever from, you know, uh, Swift UI over Android, even yes. web components, web, always the same problem, right? Always the same problem. Always the same problem. And it's always like that when you look at small examples. You can mm -hmm. get away with not doing it correctly, mm -hmm. and then when you when you do have uh, bigger problems, then it, it becomes uh, hard to change because now you've, you've make the mess everything up. Um, but this is what I what I what, what I did back then. So I created a small yeah. example for my client, then walk away. Then it didn't work. I came back and fixed the problem. So this was my consulting <laughs> strategy. You, <know? laughs> you saw the the cure and the the poison and the cure, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. And um, so, uh, and uh, what uh, what Swing did back then, or or we or we had to do, we had to be careful to run the logic or not the logic to update Swing in the Swing thread. This is that's right. Important. That's right. This, this is what always have to happen. Yeah, you have to, you're only allowed to update the UI in the UI's thread. Correct, and it gets even worse than that. You also are only supposed to read the data from the tables, for example, in the Swing thread as well. Uh, yes, you're supposed yes. to, right? Yes, and and, and, and you and shouldn't then, block the swing thread. This is yes, the next that too. <laughs> That's that too. Yeah. <laughs> that too. So if you're yeah. doing a network call, you're doing a network call now, or call to the database, 
you got to do it in a way where with another thread. Otherwise, your main event dispatch thread is blocked, and mm -hmm. um, and you get, don't get any more updates. Mm -hmm. So that's that's like really pulling out the like the oldest stuff that I wrote. <laughs> but but you know, I actually used this the same technique um, last month mm -hmm. for finding a deadlock. Exactly the same okay. technique that I wrote about twenty two years ago. Uh, okay, because uh, but it wasn't a swing application; it was a normal web application. AWT. I thought you know we had to solve it in AWT. <laughs> no, because no, no, no. no, I mean the world's moved on, you know, and and uh, and it's still the same thing. You you can always, uh, uh, always. What was the context? Was it Java? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Java. It was Java application. Um, they the, the servers had deadlocked um, mm -hmm. due to something and. Um, they wanted to find out what was causing the deadlocks, and you can normally find this information in a in a thread dump. Almost always, you'll find information about deadlocks in a, in, a, in a thread dump, but it's not always that obvious. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, when you look at the thread dump, you will it'll say at the end here, "This is your level deadlock." You know, these three threads are deadlocked, or these two threads are deadlocked, but not always. Sometimes you have to go and sort of scratch around a bit and try and find the right place where the deadlock is. So it's, mm -hmm. it's almost always there, but it's not always obvious what it is. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to take several thread dumps and several snapshots and actually compare them, diff them, and see what has changed. So it's a bit of work involved. What I used in the past is JVisual VM. It, it was able to, to detect sometimes deadlocks and was, able, was also able to do the diff. You know, JVisual VM, the old yeah, 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 sure, sure. But but that's that's just doing a um, that's just doing the, the there's a thread MX bean, mm -hmm. not 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 yeah. Adam bean, not Adam bean. Yeah. No, 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 MX, no. Yeah, no, it's bean, right? I will and rename thread... myself soon to MX. <laughs> <laughs> Mister MX, that's what we call him. Actually, MX bean. bean yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this is your thread MX bean, and the thread MX bean has a method called find deadlocked threads. Mm -hmm. And that's what they use. They just call that, and then they show what the deadlocks are. Actually, cool. You could even use J command for that, right? Um, it should work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, or you can call it in your code. So what I've done in the past, I've uh, I've just had a had a timer that once a minute would call find deadlock threads. And oh, always. So just uh, yeah, just uh, once like, a minute. Okay. No, no. Find deadlock threads. Oops, sorry. Find deadlock threads does does take a bit of time. To do, mm -hmm. um, but um, in other words, it's it's not it's not one of those calls that is instantaneous necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's very it's not going to be very slow, but it's, it's it could potentially be slower than other calls. But faster um, than deadlock. <laughs> 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 well, the funny thing with deadlock is what are you supposed to do about it, right? Um, mm -hmm. If you get deadlock, right? If you have uh, usually in enterprise applications, yep. what you can do if everything is on timeout, there's no deadlock. This is actually the the easiest possible solution to deadlocks, right? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. You, you, but, but you know, if you synchronize, you can't put a timeout on the synchronize. No, no, no there's not. But uh, my deadlocks are less, you know, low level Java deadlocks. is usually j j database with transaction lockup, so they're on. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I owe deadlocks, not that you know. Yes, uh, yes, like, yes. Yeah, and that's a sensible way to deal with it because in a database, if you if you create a deadlock, they'll time out and they'll or they'll detect the deadlock and they'll they'll fail the they'll fail your query, mm -hmm. which is the right approach. But in Java, they don't have that mechanism. If you get a deadlock, they just stop. And it's like, like yeah. well, do something, you know, give it an error or give a deadlock error or something. Does that just stand there and look mm -hmm. stupid? You know, it's mm -hmm. it's really annoying. Um, yeah. And and you can't stop a thread that's deadlocked. You can't do anything except the only thing you can do is restart. So at that level, it's it's problematic. Ah. Uh. What interests me, maybe you know it. Is it just a Java problem? I don't know what's in uh, in C plus plus. Depends on the threading library, I guess. Other languages is the same problem. You cannot stop, you know, threads in other languages. You know it. Um, I don't know. I've... This would be interesting to, to to research a little bit. I, right? I, know, Whether... I know that if you take reentrant locks, mm -hmm. you can actually stop a thread that is deadlocked. Ah, with reentrant lock, just just with that. Yeah. I mean, you the Java yeah. util. Okay. Well, anything except for synchronized, right? Because it's synchronized, you can't. But everything else, you can actually stop it. Okay. Um, your end result might not be what you want, but you can, you know, call thread dot stop, which you're not supposed to do, but you can. Even okay. better, yeah, yeah, yeah. to have timed locks, as you said, or or try lock 
to use try lock to see whether you can get the lock. Uh, the thing is, most of the time when you're getting a deadlock, it's because you, somebody has um, somebody hasn't thought too carefully about. Let me be very polite <laughs> about uh, all the locks they want to lock. You know, it's, that is yeah. sort of calling calling any methods. I actually caused the de- I, I tweeted the other day a deadlock um, with printf. Oh, ah, we had a, okay. Which is in a, in a second. A, I had a, I had a deadlock with. System get property, I think, uh, in a project under heavy that load. Sys- yeah, would, that should not happen anymore. But it happened, and it was not, not after Java yeah. nine. No, I bet it was before. before Java eight. There was it Java was, 8. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a uh, lots of. Uh, this was a uh, really a highly uh, parallel server, and mm-hmm. and and we found a deadlock exactly there. For me, it was unbelievable, but it was yes. low level yes. threat. So what I uh, low Absolutely. level access. Uh huh. Uh, by the way, before you continue, continue. Yes. What I also found a, a, a pearl of wisdom in your f- second episode, which is really nice. What you wrote, a feature that we did not have in the early days of Java, when all you needed to run the VM was a eighty three eight six with four megs of RAM, <laughs> <laughs> four megs, megabytes, four megs of RAM. Not it's like okay, Zuya complaining that Java is so bloated <laughs> so that now you that now you need to you know more than four megs of RAM. This is I really appreciate it. So this is actually you know <clears throat> maybe this will be the title of the episode. You know, uh, Java is crap because you cannot run it on four megs of RAM. <laughs> yeah, we should rather name it two old farts talking about when they were kids, you know? <laughs> no, but you know why, why it's interesting? Because right now everyone is excited, you know, that we have, I don't know, what, Rust or whatever. But back then it was everything was possible. Java grew over time, which yeah, happens absolutely. to all languages, right? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's just carried on and on and on. And more, and more, this, more and more things were added. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, sorry for the interruption, but I had, you know, to, this is the for the, for the listeners, is the, 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 the uh, how to call it, newscast number one or two. You started to count it with one, I guess. So this is the number two. I should start with zero, I think. But, you know. Yeah, but this, um, I have to say, the the content is up to date. So if you if you read it right now, you learn something because you covered really well anonymous in, in the classes. Yeah, yeah. Which is, uh, which is really unusual because this thing is 22 years old, but you could, if you remove the line with the 8386, of course, on 4 megs of RAM, <laughs> you could just sell it as a new article right now. No kidding. Because uh, actually, recently, someone asked a question about uh, initializers, and I recorded a short video about that, but I use map, and you use vector here. But it's exactly the same idea that you can, before you know map off, before this was available, you could just, you know, create map anonymous in a class and then say, no, no put, 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 put. Hmm? There was no map. Hash map. There was no hash you map. Did it, you, you did it with vector. You did it with vector. There was no, it, there was no array list. There was no map. There was yeah, no I know. Other but wonderful. what you did, you showed us how to do it with vector because there was no, nothing else. There was and nothing what I did else. Recent, what yeah. It's but what I did recent, recently is the same, the same idea. I recorded a, a, a screencast to show, oh, okay. you know, cool. what you could do before map off. Oh, right, new right, hash right. map, yeah. you know, no new hash map, and the yeah. anonymous in a class and initializer inside, because the yeah. initializers get injected in all constructors. And I got to you know the comments are amazing. I didn't knew about that, and I I read today your stuff, and I said this is amazing. Twenty two years ago, you did the <laughs> same, right? Yeah. I don't think it was a good idea, though, to be honest. <laughs> so what I will do it, I will actually read you know your old stuff you... and send it as new. You know, I, you will see you know <laughs> the, all the old stuff. I, I will be the hero in you know in the tw- twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do recommend people that they um, that they do look at some of the old stuff because uh, I mean everything is available. There are um, over three hundred newsletters, of which all of them are are publicly available in the one on the one link, mm-hmm. Java Specials mm-hmm. EU slash archive. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, so so there's there really is a lot there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I'm also of course covering the new stuff, Project Loom, and you know. The cool stuff, the modules, yeah. and weird yeah. stuff. Reflection. Yeah, but uh, I think it's important to know a little bit of history, why something worked and didn't work, at least for me. And um, with the initializers, I, I, I remember them, the static initializer and the initializer, which is yes. just yes. called yes. initializer, right? And I say, yeah. okay, because the problem with me is, you know, I spend all my time in the enterprise project with Quarkus yeah. or whatever, so that you, you don't have, you know, you don't need you know, the low-level stuff. So for me, it's a really right. refreshing to remember the old days because... Yeah. I see the, the, the Java syntax is strange. I, I, I assume 
50% of the listeners never saw this. This is like you have a Java class and you can have a block-like structure. This is two, you know, uh, uh, curly br br braces and then you can yes. put stuff there and it works. Mm -hmm. So this is now the homework to the listeners and, and, and you wrote about that 22 years ago. Um, and um, yeah, this is a nice read. So <clears throat> I interrupted you several times, sorry, but uh, the uh, you, one thing which is interesting is you told that uh, what happened to me was the deadlock it uh, will not happen anymore with Java nine. I assume that, that the system get property was is not was no more synchronized. It uh, they used uh, locks, right, for that, or what? What what changed? So my suspicion is it wouldn't happen. I okay. I'm not, I'm not going to say for sure, but yeah. I know that what what they did was they used when they did system properties, they actually did that as um, as a subclass of hash table. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. so, they, so they were mm -hmm. locking with that hash table, mm -hmm. with that with that lock, and they replaced that in Java nine to be instead using concurrent hash map internally. Okay. Okay. But the, it's a real it's a real hack because inside they they're using concurrent hash map, but it's still a subclassing hash table mm -hmm. because you can't change that hierarchy once you've made that hierarchy. You can't really change it very easily. You, you can't just say, "Well, I'm not going to be subclass oh. of hash table anymore," because you're subclass of hash table. You can't just change it. So, so the hash table anonymous the, in a class from hash table. Hash table. Um, no, it's it is still it is still this it, uh, properties. The properties class is still a hash table. It's subclass of hash table, but okay. internally, all the work that gets done is done internally with its own concurrent hash map. Ah, it's a hash table which delegates to a hash map, concurrent hash map. Correct. Correct. So internally, it delegates to a concurrent hash map, so the data is not actually stored inside the hash table, but rather inside the concurrent hash map. You can see it in two ways. Um, well, I've seen it in two ways. You've probably seen it. You would have seen it in three ways if you didn't see the deadlock. But the one way you can see it is if you if you write a little script that does lots and lots of get properties concurrently, mm -hmm. get property, get property, get property concurrently, you will find that. It is significantly faster with Java nine versus Java eight, because mm -hmm. Java eight would have synchronized the get property, and um, Java nine does not. It's uh, it's an unsynchronized read. It's, it's yeah. The a, problem in our case, read. you know, it was it was a highly multi-threaded application that all threads yes. met in in this get property. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. first of all, yeah. you'll find contention. That's the first problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then another problem you would find with the with the Java 8 version of this is that if you are iterating over a properties list mm -hmm. and somebody else changes it, you're going to get a concurrent modification exception, mm -hmm. which you won't get with concurrent hash map because it's a weakly consistent iteration. Yes. But this is a general problem between concurrent hash map and even hash map, you will get the exception. Concurrent hash map, not, don't. Well, but with hash, hash map, map is, is a lot worse. With hash map, you can get an infinite loop inside your, um, inside your structure. But, but hash uh, concurrent, hash map, mm -hmm. concurrent hash map, I think, yes. uh, what, uh, it is concurrent, but the trick is, as I remember, they have regions, right? And in, in inside the hash map, there is a region, and inside the region, it is synchronized. So the trick is, if you have multiple such synchronization islands in the concurrent hash map, this is how it works. Am I correct? Um, it used to work like this a long time ago. Okay. Um, in, in Java 5 up to Java 7. Okay. But they made quite a few changes in Java 8. Okay. Um, they still have regions, but the regions are created in a slightly different way. It's more like, um, it's more like nodes in a tree. So it will grow. Um, in the past, you would specify up front how many different regions you want. That was called your concurrency level. Mm -hmm. um, and that is now no longer used. Um, mm -hmm. it, is, it, is, it, it now simply increases it as you get more and more elements. So it uses less memory. The Java eight onwards, you have less memory than before. And uh, before the concurrent hash map was quite expensive in terms of memory. Um, mm -hmm. Now it uses less, and it also adapts better to to having um, more and more um, users of it. Okay, so it's like uh, similar to B three in in a in, in a database. Yeah, probably. It's, yeah. You like yeah, the other other cha other changes that did internally and. Um, no, but it's interesting because I was just, you know, I always wanted to know how it works. And I remember I just, you know, look at the hash map and uh, concurrent hash map and I said, okay, where is the magic? Because, I mean, it, they have to do something. 
and uh, and the magic was like clustering the stuff and uh, there was there there was the likelihood was smaller for synchronization so this was the my you know um yeah uh, um finding. on the writing you actually wouldn't get a big difference between concurrent hash map and hash table and hash if table you, if, yeah, if if you if you, mm-hmm. if you have a lot of if you have a lot of threads writing at the same time, onto highly yeah, contention. Because hash table is synchronized, right? There's no no, yes. there is no hash yeah. table is fully synchronized. So for yeah, the writing, there's no, no parallelism. There's no parallelism with hash table then. No, there isn't. Mm-hmm. None at all. It's all just one big lock. Mm-hmm. So the okay. concurrent hash map writing is not necessarily going to be much better than hash table for writing. Um, if you have a lot of threads, they're still going to start bouncing at each other and and blocking each other. But where you mm-hmm. get a difference is on the reading. Mm-hmm. On the reading, you don't have any locking. You can have basically just a volatile read, and you can get the data out. Data out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So uh, we already covered. This was, of, of course, a chaotic episode again. But uh, let's <laughs> stay with deadlocks and threads. And um, you also mentioned uh, Project Loom, and yes, Project uh, Loom. I assume you already working. You know, investigating Project Loom for 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 years or months, or at least you know, with the yeah, previous language. Years previous. and years. I've been on that for years and years. Project Loom. Very good. So, um, what's I think your the opinion first time I heard it? about it, the first time I heard about it was I went to a conference. I think it was in, I think it was in Sweden, mm-hmm. um, and and I gave a talk about something to do with 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 threads, and I showed a demo and something. And after somebody came to me and said, "This is going to be so much faster once we get." virtual threads and it was a it was a demo of i think it was parallelism mm-hmm. and the comment was oh well with threads this would be much faster with virtual threads was it an attendee or oracle finest. engineer <laughs> 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 was um, it uh, attendee did the comment or was it an oracle engineer no this is what interests I'm, me i'm pretty sure it was an attendee who'd heard okay. somewhere about fibers was fibers at the time i hadn't heard about fibers i was like mm-hmm. oh okay well um, I said to him, I don't think so. I don't think this would be faster because I was doing parallelism. Not having a clue what fibers were, I said, I'm very, very, I'd be very surprised if this is going to be faster with fibers. Okay. And so, um, of course, I went back to the hotel room and started researching what the hell are fibers because <laughs> I've never heard of it before. Like, it excuse me, I have to go to restroom very quick. <laughs> <laughs> Google, Google, Google. <laughs> And, uh, and and saw this and and uh, yeah, of course, fibers will not make parallelism faster. It will it will make the structure of of your code simpler if you're mm-hmm. doing lots of blocking. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, but it's not going to make it. it, it it's not going to make parallelism faster. It's it's not a it's not a magic source that just makes it, all the problems go away. But what um, it means makes parallelism faster? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, uh, no, it doesn't make sense exactly. It's exactly right. If like if if you hundred percent CPU on all your CPUs, yeah. you yeah. can put fibers on it. Won't make a difference. It's still going to be hundred percent CPU on all your CPUs. Yeah, you could maybe start uh, you know more parallelism faster. You yeah, know what I mean, no, you, can, actually, you can start more threads faster <laughs> or set up everything faster and wait until the resources become available. But there is no yeah. well no because with the with the with the fibers virtual threads you're going to be running on the carrier threads and the carrier threads are going to be. Um, less than you would have otherwise. So, uh, no, it's it, it, the whole comment doesn't didn't make any sense because that wasn't the purpose of fibers, and the purpose is concurrency, not parallelism. And mm-hmm. so, uh, it was just a. Oh, you know, what's the not... difference between concurrency and parallelism? Well, in parallelism, you're trying to um, solve one problem, one single problem, faster mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. spreading it across different hardware for example look at garbage collectors right we've got the it, we've got a serial collector which is a single core a single thread to do all the collection the serial collector is actually the most efficient it will use the least resources mm-hmm. but it also has a higher latency because um, if you have a lot of a lot of memory to collect the serial collector will be doing all the work by himself um, mm-hmm. and the other th- other cores will be sitting idle whilst that one cause is busy. Mm-hmm. Um, your parallel, your parallel collector collects the garbage in parallel. Mm-hmm. So that's your throughput collector. Your G one also has uh, has some parts which are parallel for the young gen and concurrent for the old gen. So the the parallel will will increase the CPU usages uh, by having more CPUs that are busy, um, and then and then hopefully get the job, job done faster. 
mm-hmm. but using more resources. So mm-hmm. you'll get the job done quicker, but you'll you'll waste more time, um, you know, synchronization between them, s- swapping information and so on. It's it's, it's always going to be some loss, but the total t- the total real time that you're going to wait is going to go down. Whereas if you do it, if you look at concurrency, concurrency allows you to do something else whilst you're waiting, um, to to do something um, mm-hmm. in the background. It's like so you could have concurrency with one. CPU or one thread, Absolutely. where Absolutely. parallelism usually doesn't make any sense with one thread. Exactly. Right? This is what this would exactly. be a difference. Okay. You, you cool. could run, you could run Project Loom on a single mm-hmm. core machine, no problem at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It would even it would make sense, it would make complete yeah. sense. Because mm-hmm. what all, you, all you're doing is, you know, I'm now doing a request to the network, and in the meantime, swap that thread out, put another thread in, and do another request somewhere else. So the Project Loom makes particularly sense for I/O. Because you are waiting, you do nothing, yes. so you're just waiting. And this is beautiful yes, it, because it you can only start makes, to know yeah, as many. It only you know, makes sense many. for IO. Only makes sense mm-hmm. for that. It doesn't yeah. make any sense for if you want to do a, a parallel sort on an array, right? <laughs> Let's do the fibers. I thought about this. It could make sense for simplicity. You can say, I don't know whether it makes sense what I say right now, but if you say, um, I'm, you know, can can use a Project Loom to to split the task to multiple tasks because it's easy. I just do it with you no know, simple Java code. Even so, it will execute slower. Um, yeah, uh, you. I, I I tried that in the beginning when, okay. when Project Loom first came out, and uh, and I discovered a few bugs in Project Loom in the fibers, yeah. Yeah. and I reported them, and I got knocked, uh, hit over the knuckles, and they said, "That's not how you're supposed to use fibers." Oh. And so I never tried it again because I know that's not the purpose of it. Mm-hmm. But um, I am going to agree with you that. You could do that. Mm-hmm. You but could do that. But it's not nice at Oracle, right? Again, maybe now there are no <laughs> kin to you. <laughs> no, no, I think it was. I think they were like a bit annoyed because I kept on sending them emails saying, "Well, you know, this this is broken, that doesn't work, and here have got a memory leak and so on." And they said, "Well, it's not even finished yet. You know, stop, stop bothering us." But it was a long time ago, so it actually might work now because um, they've done a lot of work on that. So it's mm-hmm. it's very possible that that experiment would work. But um, you you actually. Um, a better approach. Oh, let, let me let me finish the story because mm-hmm. so what happened is this: they said to me, "Oh, um, no, you shouldn't do it like this. You should rather use uh, parallel streams to do that type of mm-hmm. parallel processing." Um, and um, and so I I followed their advice, and what I was trying to do I was trying to do a big factorial, you know, like factorial of one million, you know, like a really massive number. Um, and I was trying to do it with, with, with the threads, uh, virtual threads, and I was just like getting memory leaks and dying. Um, but as I said, it's a very old version. I'm sure that they fixed those problems. Since yeah, they have to. <laughs> I mean, yeah. otherwise it would be, yeah. Yeah, no, no, I'm sure they've done this. It's a long time ago. Um, but then they said, you should use parallel streams for this. So I tried it with parallel streams, and I noticed you mean parallel that... parallel stream, Java 8 parallel stream method. This is what we Yes, mean, correct. Stream. Okay, correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. Correct. Mm-hmm. Because that is parallelism. Mm-hmm. That is parallelism. Mm-hmm. And I tried it out, and I was extremely disappointed with the result. Um, it was very, very bad. The result, and I was, I was, uh, and I couldn't figure it out because I, I, I mean, I, I did all sorts of things to try and figure out why it was so slow. The performance, um, and it was actually a completely um, uh, orthogonal problem. the The way that the parallel stream works is, it doesn't do a simple divide and conquer. Normally, if you want to do parallelism, you're going to do divide and conquer. You're going to take your work, you divide in two. Now you've got two halves. If the two halves are big enough or still too big, you divide them to half again. And you keep on doing this until you have small enough chunks <coughs> that it makes sense to do them with, uh, with, with just in one, in one drop. And, um, and then once you've got the answer, you merge them back together again. Mm-hmm. Um, the and, and that's how you normally operate. You you sort of do divide and conquer, and then you do some. Maybe maybe you stop doing it in parallel. You do it in se- sequentially with one thread, but then the final answers then merge back together again. But what happens with when you do it in parallel? Use, streams, almost what you're describing. There's yes, a um, use, yeah. uh, almost. You first split the work no. to something, and then you know. Uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a parallel map reduce, right? Yeah. You're, yeah. You're you're reducing it in parallel. You're mapping it in parallel, right? Mm-hmm. But what the parallel stream does is it doesn't break the work into 
as many parts as you've got individual items. Mm-hmm. So if you've got, for example, let's say you've got 16 million, uh, or so, say 64, 64 million items in your, uh, uh, in your list that you want to now reduce down to one. So 64 million down to one. What, um, and I've got a 16 core machine. So 16, eight core hyper threaders, so 16, th- 16 hardware threads. Um, what it will do is it will actually um, break it up into 64 equal size chunks and run each chunk sequentially. Mm-hmm. So you're getting one, one, bot of, one lot of work, one million. And then one million jobs are then all then merged together. And, uh, and, and this actually uh, had some very different performance characteristics because the, um, the multiplication was always a very small number with a very big number. <clears throat> and when you do that, mm-hmm. you use a very, very slow algorithm. And so mm-hmm. performance was really horrible. Um, I then changed it to, to fork join, or you can just use computable futures as well. And then the performance was fantastic. So if you're going to do parallelism, learn fork join or use computable futures. Both of those work quite nicely. Mm-hmm. But actually, parallel stream uses fork join behind the scenes, right? You can increase the parallelism yes. with yes, the do. fork join pool. Exactly. Um, they do, but they, uh, they make the decision um, as to how to split the data and how to do the, the divide and the, con- and the divide and, and, the, and the merging back together again. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't have much control over it. So, um, so it's, it, I wouldn't recommend it for, uh, yeah, for you say, you, you say this so, but, uh, if you have, you know, if you use parallel stream, you have already yeah. the Java 8 data structure, uh, Java 8 plus data structure, right? Which s- understands parallel stream. Okay. And then you, you have, you know, filters, map, flat maps, and reduces or whatever you have. So you can say uh-huh. parallel stream. If you change to fork join, it's not as yes. easy to use the same pattern, right? Um, well, yeah, you'll need to put a bit of work in. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's... it's uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> what, what am I going to say? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit more work than than a parallel stream. The yeah, parallel stream but what you can also do is you can split your long pipeline with parallel streams to smaller pipelines with parallel streams if you know the behavior and then optimize this way. You know what I mean? Instead of doing parallel streams and map by map, map, you can say parallel stream and then result back and then parallelize it again. So you, you have more control what happens behind the scenes. Yeah, I guess you could do that. <laughs> I'm, gonna... no, I'm just uh, thinking, but it's an interesting <laughs> problem because, uh, yeah, I have uh, also do some evaluation right now because I have to read lots of files and uh, and also this parallel stream also find, okay, I, w- I actually expect it to, 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 to be faster than this and there was not a lot of difference. And so, okay, what, what's the problem now? And what we are explaining right now is very similar to my problem, right? Uh, because okay. I want to know to read right. uh, uh, lots of files, and every file is going to be analyzed, you know, line by line. And I wanted to parallelize yes. everything, and and it was not as fast as, I, as 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 I expected. Right, right. Well, the thing, another thing with uh, parallel streams is that. So, they so are... the summary: what you what what you expected yep. is divided conquer. So let's say we have ten files. So you expected it will split split to create two buckets of five files, and two threads will process it in parallel. Right. This was your expectation. No, I was. I, I actually expected it to be broken up into more smaller chunks and then merge back together again. Which yeah, that's what I mean. Those are just two chunks. What I what I said, but yeah, you yeah, expected yeah, to do yeah, exactly. five five chunks are two files. So, so let's so say you, we would like to process. Your scenario with the ten, file. ten, ten files. We yeah, like your scenario with. Mm-hmm. Sorry, <laughs> so your scenario with the, with the, with having a bunch of files you want to process. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, you. Um, the, the the question is, what's your bottleneck? Is is your bottleneck CPU usage, or is it I/O? My nothing. My bottleneck is the logic because if I process the files sequentially, I have to wait. Yes. And okay. and, and CP, the, okay, there's just one thread which does something, and it is just my my, my CPU is not utilized, right? But if right. I split but, but, the but you're waiting on the disk. You're waiting on the file system. Or are you waiting on, on the actual processing of the file? Yeah, what I, let's say I've, I just what I always do, I've read simple code first, right? So there are a yeah. list of 10,000 files and it's go one by one and analyzes everything. Okay. 
So okay, now let's do parallel stream, right? So so then then we can read you know every file is independent, so we can we can have you know ten thousand threads which analyze the file. So and um, th this was my expectation. And the files are not that big, so I don't think. And this is you know SSD. I don't think this is the problem of I/O of the disk. And if if it were, if I have enough CPU, it should spread the work, so it should be significantly faster. Well, even if you have SSD, it still is a lot slower than reading from memory, and in comparison to the CPU speed, it's still it's like magnitude slower. Yeah. So, um, so when when you so my expectation would be okay. my expectation would be that uh, if we have fifty parallelism of fifty, it will read fifty files, you know, in parallel. Okay. This would be my expectation from parallel stream, you know, because parallelism of fifty, there is it, it, it goes one by one. But do you files. have that parallelism, or do you have a parallelism of one? Uh, the default is amount of CPU multiplied by two, I think, right? It's number of hardware threads. Yeah. That's going to be your the number of threads going to be busy because the current the current threads also going to be busy with it. But and that not multiplied be... by two. It's not parallelism number of hardware threads multiplied by two. Was no, it? it's number of hardware threads. Number of hardware threads. But okay. Um, your number of your number of cores. Mm -hmm. If you have got hyper threading, is going to be probably two hardware threads per core. Yeah. So, so time two is probably correct. Like I've got eight cores in my laptop. Mm -hmm. Times two is sixteen, so you're going to see mm -hmm. uh, the, it's going to be sixteen mm -hmm. for for the number of um, of for, for the parallelism. That's what you're going to see. Mm -hmm. But the the parallelism is going to be um, so. What should happen if you've got, let's say, you've got sixty four cores or sixty four mm -hmm. hardware threads, yeah. um, and you've got fifty thousand fifty thousand uh, files that you're trying to read in parallel. Or sixty four. No, let's say fifty thousand. Okay. Yeah. It's going to split up the fifty thousand into sixty into sixty four times four chunks. That's mm -hmm. two hundred fifty six chunks. Chunks. That's what's going to break it break it up into. And um, and then you're going to have those sixty four threads, which are on the which are inside your 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 five common. Five. Pardon. You said sixty four multiplied by five, right? No, sixty four. You, yeah. You've got sixty four. You've got sixty four threads. threads in mm -hmm. your common fork join pool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Your 50,000 tasks or 50,000 files are being broken up into 64 times yeah. 4 chunks. Times 4. Why 4? Times 4. Because. It's just because. Rest. Okay. Okay. This was this it's because. This is what it, okay. It's because. Right? Yeah. So you're going to have 100, uh, um, uh, 100 different, uh, 500 different chunks. No, what's that? Mm -hmm. 64 times 256. So it's 56. It's going to be each chunk will have 20 files. Okay. Or, or 200 files. 200 files per chunk. So, and each thread will now do those um, in its bunch. But then, then you need to, the, the thing is, um, the, the first question is, is your bottleneck I.O. or is it CPU? It's most likely going to be I.O. And, um, and the parallel streams are not optimized for doing I.O. I have some regex as well. So I think it could be CPU, you know, regex are heavy in Java, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Regex, but regex are heavy in terms of memory allocation. Yeah. But um, I just, but what you describe right now, this is what I expected, actually, the behavior. But you mm -hmm. expected something different. No, I expected, I, I would say that if you're doing this over files, you have a good probability that you're going to um, jam up your whole system because now yeah. Yeah. You, you're busy using these, this common fork joint pool. No one else can use it in the meantime whilst you're processing these 50,000 files. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, you are waiting on the disk. That's what you're waiting on. You're waiting on IO. Um, you're not doing actually doing CPU. Oh, so okay. um, so it's, it's, I, I would expect maybe, maybe you get a speed up of one and a half. This is what I get. I get actually uh, two. Yeah. It was a native implementation, and it was twice yeah. faster. And I said, yeah, okay, this is disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> no, and this was my this was a quick hack actually last weekend. It's like, let's do, let's change it, see what happens. It was uh, yeah. uh, twice faster. So, okay, it's yeah. not that different. And why not? And, 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 and and I, I, I don't care. This was just you know, an, 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 an utility class I brought. So, but, uh, and and what you'll mind? find, what you'll find, it'll be twice as fast, mm -hmm. but it'll use maybe uh, six times as many resources or more, 10 times as many resources. No, no, yeah, uh, the CPU, this was not that different for the CPU, but I have to look at the memory maybe. So the CPU was not lo lo uh, a lot a lot of difference. So this is... Okay. But 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 interesting, right? So, um, and 
What was your problem now? Because you said you had big factorial and you didn't expect the behavior of what we see right now, right? So you, be, now well, back it to you. It was actually an orthogonal problem. It was a slightly different problem, which, which had nothing to do with the parallelism as such. Okay. Uh, the, it, it was the way that it was being parallelized that it wasn't, wasn't ideal. Um, mm -hmm. So when you multiply a big integer, um, you actually have three different algorithms. Mm -hmm. The one is a very naive implementation, which is quadratic. Mm -hmm. um, and that's used for small numbers. If you've got a small number, they use that one. Mm -hmm. But it, it actually looks at, own, it looks at both sides. If one of the sides is a small number, mm -hmm. they'll use the naive implementation, which is quadratic. Mm -hmm. if, um, if both numbers are above a certain size, they use something called um, Karatsuba, which is a, it's, it's not square, it's not n squared, it's n to the power of I think it's one dot uh, four how it's called, eight five. How it's called Kara, Karatsuba. Karatsuba. It's the name of somebody who wrote it. Never heard about this, I have to admit. Really? No. Really? What do they teach you in school in, in Germany? My goodness. <laughs> uh, you know, I forgot, actually. <laughs> My school. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't learn it in school either. I'm just joking. But um, I, did, I spent too much time looking at this stuff. But Karatsuba is, if it goes above a certain number of bits, it's going to use that one. Uh, Karatsuba if algorithm. Karatsuba. K-A-R-A-T-S-U-B. Mm -hmm. um, and if, it's, if, the, if the bit's even bigger, if the big number's even bigger, there's something called Toom Cook 3. Toom as in T-O-O-M Cook 3. And that's like 1 to the power of 385 or something like that. The one is, I think, 1485, one, one is 1385 or something like that. It's 1486. It's something like that. But it's, um, it's, a, diff, it's a lower, it's a lower um, uh, complexity mm -hmm. and um, then n squared, and you know you might think, well, n squared one dot one to the n to the one to three eight five, big deal. It's a big deal. It actually makes a huge difference in performance. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that I, is I, why this is also Karatsuba. Um, is there is also one interesting algorithm? It's called Tum Cook. You know Tum Cook, yes. not Tim that, Cook. That's what, Tum Cook. That's what I just said. Yeah. So nineteen sixty three. Nineteen sixty three. Incredible. That's right. Yeah. Very old. Um, and the Karatsuba might even be older than that. I'm not sure. Yeah, three years older. Yeah. So the so the, they first use the naive one, which is n squared. Then they go to Karatsuba, mm -hmm. and if they and if it's if it's even bigger than a certain threshold, then they take Tum Cook. Mm -hmm. um, and and the the reason is that the reason why they don't always use Tum Cook is because it has a higher setup. Tum cost. Cook. Tum Cook. Tum Tum T O O M. Exactly. Tum Cook. Because Tum Cook three. has nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Not Tim Cook. <laughs> Was he born by that time? Probably. I don't know. How old is 1963 Tim Cook? has to, right? He's he older. must have been. Yeah, he's older than us. Yeah, we, yeah, are, we are born 1989. Then he. Yeah. So You're born 89. Yeah. You know, he's a youngster. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> With some, you know, this was just a um, rough average, <laughs> rough average. <laughs> <laughs> approximation. <laughs> um, um, yeah, really cool. So, but um, the fiber stuff you explained me, it is actually no more there, right? So they, uh, they they change it completely to the structured concurrency. Have you you looked at the structured concurrency? Yes. In yeah, it looks interesting. Um, <laughs> Uh, the thing with structured concurrency is... You wrote annoying um, emails to the Oracle guys again, or this time you were nicer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always nice, come on. Okay. I'm, I'm always nice. Um, I'm really, very really happy with what they're doing. So, um, yeah, But even if I wasn't, I mean... Yeah, by the way, point, it's incredible what they're doing, right? So, I mean, the, 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 the pace of innovation and what they, what they are cranking yeah, out amazing. recently is incredible. Java 19 yeah, is incredible. This is really amazing, yeah. I have to say. Yeah. It's yeah. been fine. I actually got... Uh, I actually added a, a, a parallel multiplication to big integer for Java 19. You and, added? Yeah. Cool. Got my got some code in there with using fork join. But um, what I was want to say is that... So, wait a second. You committed code to Java 19? Yeah. Very good. So, we need, need it in the show notes, of course. Send me the link. Uh, and it's and... it's it's a, it's a non-issue. It's like really just Java a little doc. bit. Of... Java doc. You formatted the Java doc of the... <laughs> <Java. laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just added a, I added a parallel multiply to the big integer. Hey, cool. So I basically paralyzed Tim Cook using yeah. Fork Join. Cool. Yeah. 
Cool. But it's it's not a big deal, really. It's not a problem. Great. But it's still still amazing. I mean that you that you know. Well, it's stuff. amazing that we can do that nowadays. And anybody yeah. who comes up with something can can get it. And I, I still need to do a write up on that. I need to write a newsletter because it's yeah, sure. it was really interesting you, you process should. to do that. You should yeah, really. Yeah. And maybe we should actually have an episode about contributing the code, what was the process, and what it does, because it's a small thing, yes. understandable. It would be actually yes. nice. So write your newsletter first. I can read it, and then we can yeah. record an episode about this. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea because. People, a lot of people have ideas, you know, why don't we do this, why don't we do well, just do it, you know. Yeah. Uh, create an issue, you create an issue, you um, you obviously will have to get your employer, if you're employed, um, mm -hmm. you'll have to get an employer to agree that you're allowed to commit. Um, then you, you know, it's like a process, you then have to get a sponsor and a verify, They've, but it's all automated. So, you know, once you're at the stage where you, you're you not ready to do something, you would you'd simply create your branch, you'd, you'd work in your branch, and then you'd commit it. Um, and send a pull request with with the with the issue number that that's tracking your work. Mm -hmm. And then if you um, if they agree with it, then then they then they they'll accept it. I also tried another one which which didn't didn't make it, um, which mm -hmm. was um, I wanted to create a faster way of processing empty streams. Empty streams. Mm -hmm. Empty streams. Because mm -hmm. what happens is now in the past you'd send a collection to a method. The method sees ah oh, it's empty and just returns. Mm -hmm. Or you have a loop, you make an iterator, and it's empty, and it's immediately returned. You don't do anything, you just go back. But with a stream, what happens is that we first have to build up the entire pipeline. Mm -hmm. Are we going to do filter, then a map, then another filter, another map, and this and that, and this. Uh, make it in stream, and, and, then, and then once you've built up the whole pipeline, mm -hmm. then you say, right, let's do the work. And you go... Uh, there's nothing to do. Mm -hmm. So if you've got all the cost of the pipeline and uh, and you throw that all away, um, lots of object allocation, all of that stuff, all for nothing because the stream was empty anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea was the following, and this was uh, Brian Gutz uh, and I chatted about this. Uh, he suggested that we we could try this, um, is to is to have a new subclass, a new instance of stream, which is actually an empty stream. So when you, when you construct a stream, Mm -hmm. It will give back an empty stream, and you mm -hmm. simply use that stream, mm -hmm. and it will um, ignore all the additions, the all the builders which happens exactly. behind the scenes, right? It mm -hmm. just it will just basically return this, yeah. not exactly because mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can't do that because it other rules. Um, and that one man, I chased down that rabbit hole for for weeks. I was like, <laughs> my wife's like, "What are you doing? Um, I'm working on this thing." And I was like, well, what, I'm "What is on an empty uh, stream?" I was like, "Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like it's like doing stuff," and. Um, but the I thing understood is first, Heinz, I understood first that you are working on empty string. I was like, this becomes strange. Stream, 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 yeah, stream. I know, stream, I know, no. But uh, you, if you empty said it the first stream, time, I said, you would stream, like to yeah. improve the performance of an empty string. I said, okay, I never had such problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but the empty stream is actually an issue, right? Yeah. If, if you, yeah, yeah. Um, you can see a real performance degradation if, you're, if, you, if you go from, from iteration to streams. And you you discover that all of a sudden you have all this object allocation and delays and so on. And so, it can happen. Um, I, I don't know whether it is also applies uh, in the implementation, but uh, when it can happen a lot is with optional, right? Because you can have optional which is mm -hmm. null, and then you have map filter or whatever. So my, this is how I actually you can have optional of nullable, let's say, yeah. and uh, the data structure inside optional can be null or not. So the question is whether you know yes. optional behaves differently to your stream. Or is it already optimized or not? This is the question. No, that is optimized because the, okay. opti the optional. Uh, I would. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb because I haven't, I haven't looked at it, but I'm going to say it's opt it's it's okay. working. Because the difference between stream and optional, and this is where I actually failed in the end, and I, I, I had to forget that I had to abandon the project because um, when you create a stream, you can make, for example, a stream on an array list. So you make the stream, mm -hmm. and then you can add items to the array list after you've constructed the stream. Mm -hmm. And those items will be visible in the stream. Mm -hmm. This is this is different to an iterator. If I make an iterator on an array list and then I add items to the array list, I'm going to get an exception. Mm -hmm. But with a stream, you can do it. You can make your make your array list empty. You can then make a stream, and then you can add items to the array list afterwards. And if you, if you use the stream, you'll see the items are there. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's the problem because now, um, if you if you have this sort of an empty stream, and I create that. Um, from an array list, somebody could change the array list afterwards. Ah, oh, okay. And so uh, the semantic would change. This is actually not nice, but uh, if you have an empty stream and there is no more empty, so your optimization, okay. Exactly. Then it gets thrown out. And then you have to, you, you have to, but you've lost all the filters that have been applied. They've all been thrown in the in the, in the junk, mm -hmm. in, in the in the garbage garbage can. Mm -hmm. So, um, and there's another problem. 
which is more subtle than that one, and that is the um, the megamorphic call sites. Call sites? Yeah, megamorphic call sites. Okay. What what is it? So when you when you call um, a a class, you call an object which is of a certain type. A polymorphic um, depending... call sites, you mean? Polymorphic. Yes, polymorphic. 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 Yeah. Call sites. I, I understand. No, 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 not polymorphic. I said megamorphic. 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 Polymorphic. Megamorphic. You said megamorphic, right? Yes, mega. Okay, mega this is what I don't know. Polymorphic, okay, I could imagine, but megamorphic okay, so, call signs. But this is, but so, this, so, this sounds so you, mega. So mega. you know what? You know what polymorphism is, obviously. Yeah. Right. You have a, a class and several subclasses. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you only have one subclass, mm -hmm. Java can optimize it very strongly. I actually write about this in one of my newsletters uh, when we see uh, polymorphism. It was the one newsletter 157, 158. Okay. 100, I talk about polymorphism in the show performance notes, 157. And, and 158. Mm -hmm. So what I what I what I, I discovered um, is that if you if you just have one subclass, the mm -hmm. server hotspot is really good at optimizing that code to be inlined. Mm -hmm. and, and so basically, we call that monomorphic. Mm -hmm. Monomorphic. Mm -hmm. um, and so monomorphic, it's it's like it's it's like if you, if you run a, if you run a test, for example, an experiment, and you've got just one subclass. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll find it being like super optimized and very fast. The moment you've got two subclasses, it still is optimized, but not as much. It's no longer inline, but they replace it. They replace a polymorphism with simply a biomorphic, just mm -hmm. an if-else statement. Mm -hmm. So it becomes biomorphic rather than mm -hmm. um, monomorphic, just mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. Some VMs, I think Azul's, old uh, machine used to do trimorphic. I don't know if they can do trimorphic with, with Graal, but some VMs w were able to do, I'm not sure about if IBM can do can do trimorphic, but some can do trimorphic as well, where it's basically if-else, if-else statement. Mm -hmm. And if it's more than that, then it's then it can't. It's got to use a V-table lookup, and we call that megamorphic, megamorphic okay. call site. So it's not it's, aware of this term. So everything which is more than three, you know, uh, hierarchy, the problem is the polymorphic more call. Two. More than two. More than two. More than two. Uh, right. And, and, and uh, Az uh, Azul, maybe three. So the, the problem is... Well, we call IBM, method. maybe three. IBM, maybe three. I, I don't know. Okay. But, it's, it's but, like but if we... For the two, problem is, for me, ju just explaining, if, if we call a, a method of a subclass, so the JVM has to do some work, and if it's just one subclass, it's very easy because yes. it's inline. So this is just this one. Exactly. If two, there is if else, and if more is kind of a switch or whatever. And this is less less optimal because well, it becomes the, a V table, and the V table lookup is, mm -hmm. is a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm. So um, where you can see that is if if you look at Java nine and ten, Java nine and ten, um, you know the the new um, factories, uh, list off and set off, map off, and yes, map off? yes, yeah. Uh -huh. So in Java and of and of entries. There is off and off. Entries. Yes, that's since Java 10. So yeah. Java 9, you had list off. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to Java 9 and you try it out and you say list off empty, mm -hmm. list of nothing, list of one item, list of two items, list of three items, right? What you'll find is that they 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 have different classes that they get back. Oh. So uh -huh. so the one one time you're getting back a class called list zero, mm -hmm. then you get a class called list one, and then you get a class called list two. And then if it's more than two, you get it back a class called list n. Mm -hmm. And this, um, so you got four subclasses mm -hmm. um, for your for your immutable list. Mm -hmm. And they found that that actually gets into the megamorphic call sites um, problem. Mm -hmm. That because um, you've got so many different subclasses, you actually now are paying a penalty for if, if you use it and if if you've got like different uh, combinations of this in different in, in a particular context. Um, and so what they did was they changed it in Java 11 to only have two subclasses. Mm -hmm. What's interesting, um, Heinz, so what it means mm -hmm. is map of two is not instance of map of three, right? That's correct. It's interesting. Um, so what they did was they, uh, actually, I'm not sure about map. Um, I, I imagine it's the same, but I because know for you know list, what I mean, if they return like different, that. when they return different subclasses, they are not the same class. So it will fail actually the, the test. Class. It's interesting. Yeah. So if you say, pack, actually. <laughs> so if you say list zero, uh, mm -hmm. list without list without any list off with no other elements, mm -hmm. dot get class is not the same as list of one item. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they they changed it to the four subclasses and you have two subclasses, mm -hmm. and the the um, list zero is actually if if you have no no items, it uses list n. With simply an empty array, mm -hmm. um, so they just have one constant that is reused over and over again. So if you say list off several times, 
it's always the same object you're getting back, mm -hmm. obviously. I mean, they wouldn't make a new object for that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the type is list n. If you, of, of an empty list, if you have list one, they have, an, have another class called list one, two. So for list, for single list, it's list one, two. If you have two items, also list one, two. Mm -hmm. So why would they do that? Why would they have the same class for list one and list one, two? For one and two items. Have hmm. a guess. Reuse maybe as well. I mean, the instance reuse. But what about wasting memory? I have no idea why they're doing this. Why? Because they use exactly the same amount of memory. They both use, I think, 24 bytes. Okay. So in other words, when you had list one mm -hmm. with a single list, yeah. with a single item in the Java 9, yeah. um, they actually had four unused bytes oh. in that class, which were not used. And so why they could just reuse why, why, why this? Why because this? Um, memory is allocated in eight-byte chunks. Okay. So this, uh, okay. I, I thought that this is like some algorithmic, but this is a, a no. It's it's just memory allocated in eight okay. byte chunks. So and you, what you're saying that you have list of two is more memory efficient than list of one because it's wasted anyway. So they always do two, right? There's always space for two because it doesn't. Uh, th th there is no optimization for list of one, right? Because list of one will waste four bytes, so they always do list yeah. of two because it doesn't matter. And there's no the point having class two classes. Mm -hmm. uh, for one we lost one for one item one for two items there's no mm -hmm. point in doing that mm -hmm. um, they can simply set the second item to null mm -hmm. and um, lists aren't allowed to have null so that that way they can determine whether or not it's uh, list one or list two mm -hmm. um, and then of course if it's more than two then it's simply list n they simply have an array inside which points to the actual we are operating on complete different levels so I'm, I'm working usually 20 uh, layers above. So now if you're asking about, yeah, so yeah, okay, yeah. this was the yeah, question yeah. about memory. So I would never think about this. So I would I never know, answer the question know. right now. This is interesting. Um, and th th that's actually, uh, but really interesting stuff what they are doing. Um, uh, and um, one, one question, if you, if the polymorphic of behavior of one, so monomorphic, when monomorphic. it was optimizing, monomorphic means one, right? One. One, yes. monomorphic, right? Monomorphic, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. When it was optimized in Java, Oh, uh, ages ago. Uh, but um, not from the beginning, right? Um, let me see, uh, because I wrote about it in... Uh, yeah, we, we need uh, it in the show notes, because I tell you a story, and this is a funny one. Do you remember um, Subnext? Okay, so, so first of all, it would have been optimized... Um, it was optimized differently for the client and the server hotspot. I, I tell I you a story, question. a funny one. Okay, go for it. So... One of my first projects in commerce, it was uh, prior to 2000. I, um, I think we started with JDK 1.1. And then we moved. I, 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 I'm pretty sure we we also use one, one one eight, and one one seven. This would I note for sure because the JIT was optimized back then. And um, so, and uh, we implemented more or less struts without struts. So we had a controller yeah. servlet, HTTP servlet, and um, so I was I, I built a servlet. And what I knew back then that. Uh, that polymorphic monomorphic uh, behavior is slow. So um, if yes. we have a, a subclass of the HTTP servlet, it will be slower. And this was the central, you know, point, and I wanted to make it faster. So what I knew is, if you make the servlet final, uh, JVM can optimize. Is that a hint for the for the for the JVM? There will be no subclass, and then it was faster. So this was knowledge back then. What I remember. Why I remember this. It's, it's because I did some performance uh, tests and the version of the product was like, you know, my something and then V11 one, one, whatever and then uh, S for synchronized. So I do the do, meth, do get method synchronized and F for final. So um, and I did performance tests just, you know, without synchronized, with synchronized and final or not final. So okay. and now comes the funny part. So um, I was consultant, a freelancer. So I, I, I switched to other project for, for a while and came back. And I came back and uh, everyone asked me, you know, uh, what, when we have the San Francisco framework, I don't know what they remember. There was a big San Francisco framework for IBM. I don't remember that. Though. It was, there were books about that. There were enterprise patterns, whatever. And, and they asked me, you know, when the San Francisco edition of the system is, is done, of the application. San Francisco is like, what are we talking about? <laughs> I, 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 we never, never had the nothing, you know. So I never thought about San Francisco integration. It's like e-commerce uh, framework. Yeah. And yeah. <clears throat> what what happened is uh, the uh, marketing department they saw the version one SF, 
and they assumed <laughs> that I starting, you know, to, to to build a connector for San Francisco, and they couldn't ask me because I was away. And I came back. Uh, everyone, they already wa- were about to sell the software as San Francisco edition, and and uh, and we had to integrate that because it was already you know on the on marketing material and everywhere. So this is why, if you started to talk about monomorphic, I I remember you know this situation with my uh, where I tried to optimize, and um, back then it was not a lot of difference, but there was some. I cannot remember what what the impact was, but it was sure JFDK one one, and what I know yeah, for sure got, got it was tricked. prior to one two. As it was not Java 2. Mm-hmm. You got tricked. Okay. So what they did in 1.1.1 is they would inline the method call into where you're calling it, if it was a final method. Okay. So if you decompiled the code and looked at the decompiled code, you would have seen that the method was actually inline to where it was being called from. Okay. But um, I was... At compile time. And they changed that in hotspot to happen at runtime. Uh-huh. But um, and I'm not exactly sure when. I think it was probably with the server hotspot, and the client could do it in some cases, but not all. Okay. So there were some differences when they could do it. But uh, my information back then is that if the class was not final, the JVM couldn't optimize that because they suspected that someone could inherit from the class. This was the problem back then. You know, I didn't have any any uh, inheritance. Yes. Yes. I, no, I, no, it was just but, the but possibility. It was happening with Java C. Okay. That's what was happening. It wasn't happening at runtime. It was happening with Java C. Doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure now it's now it's gone. But back then, uh, we tr- I don't even know whether what whether it. I think it uh, left final. It so it, it can actually determine at runtime whether or not you've got multiple instances of a class in that context, and then mm-hmm. it will it will actually deoptimize the code. So if it's inline the code, it'll deoptimize it and reoptimize it differently. Mm-hmm. So it's not something you need to worry about too much. We have to stop right now. Otherwise, we'll talk you know the entire. <laughs> but um, I really would like to reinvite you back, and we can I can pick an, uh, your a newsletter and discuss this because lots of fun for me at least. And um, if well, you like, we can do it again. Enjoy it, absolutely. And I remember the old times Looking because back to. then I had to build the servers. Now we're just using the servers, right? So back then I had lots of issues, and I've read your newsletter. I was like, okay, this is actually really cool. I exactly <laughs> remember this, uh, the problem. And right now, I just write simple Java code. So actually, uh, yeah, you don't need yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a lot because, um, yeah, I just spend, you know, an enterprise level stuff. I call it enterprise, but it's like, you know, the old APIs, we even do enterprise software for startups. But what I mean is high level, how to call it, Quarkus and development, yeah, right? micro profile. Unfortunately, we still have sometimes the, the issues leaking through to us. Always. We shouldn't. Oh, we always. Shouldn't you know, we shouldn't deadlocks, have, transactions, think, parallel yeah. streams. Can we use parallel yeah. stream if the, in yeah. managed threads? This was also an interesting one. The application server, the thread pool, but this is, you know, parallel streams are outside. If you start uh, yeah. application server threads and parallel stream, you have so many, so many threads that, I mean, right. it, it will exactly. kill the server. So it always leaks, but not all the yeah. time. So, you know, I, I write yeah. 80% uh, simple code and I have remember what I did, you know, 20 years ago to, to, to understand. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, exactly cool. It's like if you look at the number of flags for CMS, mm-hmm. it's like 86 flags. <laughs> and, and half of them, if you even touch them, they'll get like really bad performance. Okay, um, the, 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 next, the next podcast will start. You will have to know to list the first 20 flags to verify whether you know <laughs> about the technology. I don't know. Just 20, you know. <laughs> really Whereas cool. The ZGC is like five flags or something. Where okay, people can in, fire you or find you, you know, your company. Fire me? Is this, uh, no, hire. Hire me. Hire, oh, hire, not, me. Not fire. hire me. The XML specialist. If someone needs to know some XML <laughs> or visual basic knowledge. So. <laughs> <laughs> if someone wants to solve a tricky issue, performance mm-hmm. issue, memory leak, uh, garbage collection, deadlocks, threading issues, uh, not fast enough or too, or too fast, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> whatever you know just get me on java specialists.eu uh, just okay. grab me on that very or good just send me a, just get me on twitter my dms are open heinz kabutz h-e-i-n-s-n-z-k-a-b-t-z uh very easy um just send me send me a link send me a message and i'll be very happy to help you perfect thank you i really enjoyed the conversation it was fun so actually it was Cheers. um yeah Cheers. Always is fun talking to you. And next time I'll be prepared for your questions. <laughs> Realizing any no, it's, we quick, don't, you don't have. We always find a topic because if we have to prepare, it costs time, you know. It should be fun, I think. More fun. <laughs> Definitely. All right, Adam. Bye. Bye.